Praise the Lord. Welcome to God's Way Community Church. Today is October the 11th, 2020. The days are going by extremely fast. Uh, God is getting soon, getting ready to come back soon. And uh, so we hope that you are preparing yourself for his, his soon return because he certainly will be coming back soon. So we pray that God is blessing you and keeping you in this time. And we're going to go to our Bible study for today. And uh, we hope that God will give you something that will bless you in his word. We know that we are moving close to the coming of the Lord. I heard one person say, uh, we don't, we're, we're not in the last days. We're in the last minutes, maybe the last seconds in terms of God's time. Things are really, really moving quickly toward, amen, what God is going to do at this end time. And I know there are people out there who say they've heard this over and over and over, and I know that one day they're not going to hear it again. It's going to be happening. So we need to actually be prepared for that. All right, today we're going to go into our Bible study. Our Bible lesson for today is get rooted in God. Say that with me, somebody. Get rooted in God. Amen. How many people know you need to be deep, entrenched, embedded in God because if you're not guess what the time is going to come when we are going to be tried and tested you may think you're going through some trials now but the time is coming when Christians in this world and the world in general is going to be under more pressure and we've got to be able to stand so to that end we're going to be discussing that today how to get rooted in God and what that means and why it's very important for us to do that Okay, let's have a quick word of prayer together if you don't mind, and then we'll go into our Bible class for today. Father, in your blessed name, we thank you for your goodness, your mercy. We thank you for the people that are going to hear this Bible class. We thank you for those who are going to, to tune in, and we pray that you bless the deliverer, the presenter, as well as the hearer, that we may re receive your word and be blessed thereby. We give you the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right. Thank you again, amen, for joining us. A little bit of housekeeping, as is our custom. Before we get started, don't forget to go to our website and, and download the document that you can follow along with as you listen to the video presentation. Secondly, if you have any questions or comments, please don't uh, feel bashful about emailing them to us at worship at godswaytoday.org, worship at godswaytoday.org, amen. We'd love to hear from you and we, we will try to do everything we can to get back with you and answer any questions that you may have, okay? All right, uh, thank you very much again for, for joining with us. Let's go to our main scripture, our opening text. We're gonna be coming from a particular section in the Bible what you've probably heard many, many times, and I've read this scripture in its variations, uh, this parable that Jesus gives a number of places in the Gospels, and it, we're gonna take ours from Mark chapter four, verse number uh, three, including down to verse number eight. Now, the entire text runs down to verse number 20, but, and we're going to be dealing with some of those later verses past verse number eight in our lesson, so we won't read all that. But let's go to the book of Mark chapter number four, verse number three, and we'll begin reading there, and I'll read down to verse eight. Listen to what it says. Hearken, Behold, there went out a sower to sow. Jesus is given the parable of the sower and the seed. We've heard this many times. And it came to pass, as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. Verse number five, and some fell on stony ground, where it had not much root, and immediately it sprang up, because it had no depth of earth. Now remember that. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, I mean, somebody say root, it had no root, amen, it withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. And other fell on good ground and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased and brought forth some 30, some 60, and some 100. As we start this, we see that the Lord gives us four different kinds of soil. Okay, we know that the seed is the word of God, amen, and the soil represents the condition of the individual or the heart of the individual that the seed or the word of God falls on. So what we need to understand is about this, when every time I read this, I think this, this is a great 
powerful script, set of scriptures because it is very revealing to us in terms of the kind of people that not, not only that God is looking for, but the kind of people that are going to be able to stand and make good saints. Hello, somebody. I don't know about you, but I want to be a good saint. I don't want God to come back and tell me that I gave you all the tools and that you didn't materialize and produce what I hoped you would produce. I don't want God to tell me that. So we're going to take a look at some of these today, and we're, we're not going to talk about it all in depth, but I want to give you a treatment of them to show you what is lacking from so many that we can be the good soil. Amen. So we need to root in us. And our subject today, we're going to be focusing on that area when we get to that point, uh, pretty much so. Uh, have some root. Uh, get rooted in God. And we're going to talk about why that's very important. Let's go on to our first scripture, and we're going to talk about the Word of God. We know that the Word goes out, according to the word to Bible, and the sower is sowing the seed. Uh, Isaiah chapter number 55 and verse number 11. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I send it. Psalms chapter 119 and 9. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? Okay. By taking heed thereunto according to thy word. All right. Uh, I just wanted to bring that out just to say this. The word of God is not the problem. If we have anyone that does not materialize, we, you and I need to understand that if we do not materialize to what God wants us to do, it's not because of God's word. God's word will go out and not return the void. It will accomplish that which he sets out. So the seed that the sower is sowing out is not where the trouble is. The trouble has to ha happen with the ground. So we need to take a look at our part of that, and that's the part that you and I take part in, is the ground part, so that we can actually take care of it and fix it so that we can bring forth fruit. Now, there are four different kinds of ground. I want you to remember this. Somebody say four. Four. Only four. There will never be more than four. Let that sink in for a moment. There will never be more than four different kinds of ground. No matter what goes on, you and I are going to fit in one of these four categories. This is something that is imperative for the world to understand. Many people come to Christ and they don't understand that we are going to fit into one of four categories of ground. And we want to be the ground that's the good ground, but there are some requirements that we've got to have if we're going to do that. So the first ground that he talks about is called the wayside. I call that the wayside hearer. Okay, let's go to uh, Mark. Now we're going to drop down to Mark chapter number four, verse 15. And it says, and these are they by the wayside. Now Jesus is explaining to his disciples on the side what these scriptures meant that he gave them when he was giving them the parable. So he explains that the wayside here, they hear on the wayside where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately. Listen to me, saints. Satan comes immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their heart. Now, we have to ask ourselves this question. What we, before we get to, to what Satan does, let's talk about this part. The wayside person is a person that hears the word of God. Notice that Jesus says he hears. Now, when he uses this word in this particular context, he doesn't mean he really understands. He just hears. It's almost as if somebody's listening to a loud noise. I heard the noise. They may not know what the noise is. They may not know it's a siren as opposed to an alarm going off in someone's alarm clock, but they heard the noise. So the hearer is a person that comes and he hears the word. Now we know that Romans chapter number 10, verse 17 says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But this kind of hearer is just someone who hears and does nothing else but just hears the noise. Now, somebody may ask me, well, what kind of person is that? And, and, and why would they do that? It, there's a very good reason. And the biggest reason is that Satan is trying to take the word from them so that the word does not go into their heart and begin to attach itself so that it can become fruitful. Now, and the scripture says, these people, Satan comes along immediately. Somebody say immediately. He comes along immediately and taketh away the word. How does he do that? How does Satan come along immediately and take away the word? Well, this, uh, there are a number of ways he does that, and one of the primary ways is distraction. 
Haven't you seen, uh, picture this, haven't you seen somebody uh, like a child tossing up a, a marble in their hand and, and, and all of a sudden they toss it up and another child reaches over quickly and snatches the marble before it gets back down to their hand. So most of us have done something like that or flipping a coin and as we're flipping the coin, somebody reaches over and snatches the coin out of the midair. That's the same kind of concept as the enemy coming in. He does this through distraction. People come to church, they may hear a noise, a baby crying in the background. Okay? They're thinking about what's going to happen if they take this word and, they, and, they, and, and what's going to happen to them uh, or what they're going to have to give up if they come to God. They begin to dwell on what they were doing at work, all kinds of things the enemy uses to distract and take away our, our mind from the word. Another thing he uses is to have people will have an ill temper for the word. They're, 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 they're against the word. When they hear it, they, 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 don't, they don't want to believe it. They don't want to accept it, okay? They don't like the way it's delivered. All of these things are tactics for them so that they only what? They only hear the word. They don't have the word going into them. How, how many times, you think about this, how many times have you come and listened to the word of God or you thought you were listening to it, go outside and about five minutes after the church is out, ask somebody what the service was about, what the sermon was, what the word taught, and many people cannot tell you. Why? Because of distraction in the enemy that wants to take the word and destroy it before it becomes fruitful. This is the wayside here. All right, let's go on to the stony ground. This is a little more interesting. The stony ground person, look what he says in John chapter number four, verse number 16 and 17. And these are they likewise, which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word, now listen to that very carefully, they have heard, they heard the sound, they know it was the word, they know it was preaching. When they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness. Okay, there's, he, he, he added the piece there, didn't he? They not only heard it, but they received it with gladness. So that tells us there is a distinct difference between hearing and receiving. All right? Okay? They receive it with gladness. Look at verse 17. And have no root in themselves, and so endure but for a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. Now, we need to understand this. This is very, very important. Jesus adds a word to this category of believer. I'm going to call this person a stony ground Christian. And why do I call him a Christian? Because he says a word here that brings us to, into another category of how this person deals with the word. You see, Jesus said in one particular scripture, let him that hath an ear hear. So when you have an ear to hear, you can hear. What does that mean? He said in that same, uh, the very next scripture after he was talking to them about that, he said that hearing they may not perceive and not understand. So you can hear a sound and not understand or conceptualize what the word is saying. So it is important to understand that when Jesus uses the word hear and receive, it means that the individual has taken the word in, the word has begun to take root, he is excited about you hearing the word, and he begins to act in spiritual or biblical belief. His faith causes him to obey the gospel. Now, this type of believer, the stony ground believer, notice what he says. He continues and endures for a time. So not only is he excited about the word, I'm saying he here, you know it could be a man, male or female, but he's excited about the word. Not only that, this person will most likely go on, they may be baptized in the name of Jesus, they may even go on to be filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost, and they may begin to seem really excited, their faith is growing. But here is one thing that is wrong. Look what he says to them in verse number 17. They have no root in themselves. Now we're going to talk about this and we're going to talk about why it's important for us to get rooted in God. Okay. What does he mean when a person has no root? They have no character. They have no character in themselves to endure. They get offended by the slightest little thing. Can I tell you something? There are a lot of people who have the misconception that being a Christian is easier than being an unsaved person. And I'm going to tell you something, that's a fallacy. It is not easier. And you know why? Because the, the, the entire world is going to be against you. Jesus said if they have done these things to a green tree, what should they do to a dry one? 
okay? So that when you and I get saved, what we have to understand is the devil and all of his power begins to be focused on us to turn us away from living for God. So these people who come in sometimes come with a misconception that when I get saved, life is supposed to be easier for me. No, friend, let me tell you something. Jesus said many times, I don't have anywhere to lay my head. I don't have a place to stay. You need to count up the cost because it's going to cost you something. See, I'm afraid that what has happened to us as children of God, as people of God, is that there are too many people who are teaching an easy believism doctrine, and that easy believism doctrine has caused us to misconstrue the scriptures and think that we are supposed to be on flower beds of ease. Watch this. Brother Paul says that we, through much tribulation, must enter in. Let me tell you something. You being persecuted and people talking about you because you are holy, because you are godly, because you are living for God, because you are not doing what they are doing, is part of the tribulation by which you are going to enter into the kingdom of God. Don't ever think for one moment that when we are born again, we are going to be exempt from persecution. But the person who is the stony ground, they're excited. They become almost there, but they have no root. They get to the door. They stay for a while, but they never develop that root. And I'm going to tell you something else. Here's another reason why they, they fall off. Another reason that causes the shallow person to turn her back is because they have hard sayings that's in the word of God. Okay? Remember this. The, the, the Paul says in the book of Hebrews, chapter number four, verse 12, I think I put this in your notes. Listen to what Paul says in Hebrews. The word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing even the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Saints, understand this. God's word cuts the natural or the carnal nature of man. It hurts. Sometimes it's deep and it's hard. For example, Jesus was talking to his disciples in the book of John, chapter 63, verse 66. Look at what he says here. He says, and he said, therefore, said I unto you, that no man can come unto me except it be given him of the Father. Listen to verse number 66. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, will you also go away? Then Simon Peter answered and said, Lord, to whom shall we go? That's a good question. Thou hast the words of eternal life, and we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. Now, prior to Jesus making this statement to these people, he had just given them a scripture that was hard to swallow, and the shallow hearers went back. What was that scripture? He said to them, except you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you don't have any part with me. Because he was telling them, I am the bread of life. And the Bible says, they said, this is a hard saying. So many times, the stony ground hearer or the shallow person hears something in the word of God that cuts to the core. It's difficult for them to accept. So they do what? They back away from the word. They say, I just can't. I, I, no, no, I just can't receive this. Why? Because the enemy wants to sever them from the word of God so that the word doesn't continue to grow in them so that it finds a place deep enough in the soil to take root. Because remember, the stony ground doesn't mean it's solid, hard. It means that it just doesn't have enough earth to settle into the ground and take deep enough root. For example, how many people have ever seen a sequoia tree? A sequoia tree, we have them in California and they're huge, right? They're huge trees, but guess what? Sequoia trees have very shallow roots. So how do they stand and get so big? There's a method to their madness. Their, their, their roots span out in a wide range of ground to cover more surface area, number one. And number two, have do you noticed this? You've never seen a sequoia tree standing anywhere by itself. It's always in clusters of other sequoia trees. So the root system of those trees intertwine with each other to help them stay up. Otherwise, when the wind comes along, it would blow it down more easily and those trees would be blown to the ground easier. So, so root systems are very, very important. 
on trees that go deep into the ground with their roots where the water source is great and it goes deep into the ground, they don't have to have as much trees around them. They can stand by themselves. But that root system must penetrate that soil and the soil must intertwine with the root enough so that when the wind and the rain comes and the sun comes, it has depth. This is what the stony ground hearer is missing. They are missing depth. They need to come into the house of God and understand how to get rooted in the word of God. Let me tell you something, saints. This kind of listener, this kind of hearer is very close to being able to materialize, but they miss it because they fall back. They get persecuted. They get afflicted. What's an affliction? Notice he said when afflictions come, afflictions are problems. People, all of us have problems. Let me let you in on a secret. You're not the only person in the world who has problems. You're not the only one who's ever going to endure some problems. We all are. But when afflictions, which are problems, difficulties, hardness, hard times, when those things arise, along with persecutions, he says, they turn away and they give up. They need to develop root. They need to be rooted in God, and they're not. Now, I want to go really quickly to the last kind of hearer that we get from Jesus, and then we're going to talk about what that person who is, is stony needs to do to get rooted so he can become a good ground type of saint, all right? Okay, I'm going to the third one, which is the thorn engulfed hearer, because the thorn engulfed hearer, they have another set of problems that they have, which they'll allow them to be uh, become good soil uh, saints or materialize into the kind of saints that are productive. Let's go to Mark chapter 4, verse 18 through 19. And those are they which are sown among thorns. Now listen to this. Such as hear the word, and verse 19, and the cares of the world. Listen to this very closely. And the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things entering in choke the word. Somebody say choke. Choke the word and it becometh unfruitful. Jesus categorizes this group of people as he does the wayside group. He says that they are hearers. Notice he doesn't use the word receive here. He says these people hear. So these people are in the same category as the people who just come in and hear the word. Okay? Can I, I'm going to say this. These people are in trouble. They're in trouble just like the people who are the wayside hearers. They just hear the word and it really doesn't do them a whole lot of good. But they're a little bit better off. The people where the seeds fell on thorny ground. And I'm going to explain why. He says, remember, they hear the word. But this is what happens that brings them a little closer to being fruitful other than the ways out here. But these people are kind of like birds. They're like birds that are trapped into a set of thorns and thickets. And they just can't break free and get flying. Just a picture of this kind of person like that. That's how I see it. Okay, so what happens, what causes them to become overwhelmed so that the word that was put in them does not become fruitful? He adds that piece. So they keep the word to some degree better than the wayside here, but the word never becomes fruitful. Why? The cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things choke the word and it never materialized. This person's is a type of person that Brother Bacon is going to say, he never or she never leaves Egypt. This is one of those people who when they hear the word, they never really let go of the life they used to live and embrace the life that God wants them to live. So as a result of that, they never go on to be a real Christian. They have their foot in the world and they have their foot in the church and they never materialize. And what happens is, remember this scripture, the Bible says the righteous is more excellent than his neighbor, but the way of the wicked seduces him. What seduces him? The way of the wicked. The way of the wicked is the way of the world. First John chapter number two, verse 15, 16, and 17. The Bible says what? Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For all that are in the world is the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Note this. If you look closely at 1 John chapter 2, verse 16, and compare it to the things that Jesus just told us, that the person who is a thorny, engulfed saint hears, those three things are almost identical to the three things that causes us to fall if we love the world. 
Okay, so this person never materializes because the deceitful of riches, their, their cares, the problem that they have, all the stuff that they keep looking at back there in the world never allows them to materialize and they don't become saints. Now, think about this, saints. I want you to think about what we're saying here. So far, we've covered three different kinds of ground and none of them have materialized to become saints. Only one of them the person with the seed that fell on stony ground endured for a little while. But the rest of them have not materialized at all. See, I'm going to say something, and I hope this doesn't sound difficult for anybody, but we've got to come to this truth. Saints, let me tell you something. There are going to be so many more people who come into the house of God that never materialize to be the kind of people God wants and they're not going to be saved in the end. You know why? Because the enemy is going to take it away from some people. The enemy is going to scare some people off and after they stay for a while, he's going to make it, some people are going to say, oh, this is too difficult for me to do. I can't receive this. I'm out of here. And they're going to leave. There are going to be people who are going to say, you know what, I hear what you're saying, Brother Bacon, but I love this. I remember years ago, I witnessed to a, a man, and he came to church, and he was doing really good, and all of a sudden, he fell away. And so I met him one day, and I asked him, what happened? Where, where have you been? What's going on? And he told me how, his, how he loved his girlfriend too much to part from her to come and live for God. He made his choice. The cares of the world choked him out, and, he, and the word never became fruitful. I don't know where he is today, but I'm going to tell you this much. There is only one type of ground that is going to be accepted and going to bring forth what God wants to bring forth. We're going to talk about that right now, all right? The good ground saints. I'm going to call these the good ground saints. Say, say the good ground with me. The good ground saints, okay? Let's read Mark chapter 4, verse 20, because Jesus explains what makes this group stand out so much more so than the other groups. Mark chapter 4, verse 20, he says, And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word and receive it. All right, there he goes again. Are you staying with me? Those two words, hear and receive, are used in a couple of places. So he throws them out to us again. These people, that good ground, they hear and receive. They do exactly the same thing that the people who were on the stony ground did, who didn't have any root. Let's see what happens to these folks. Because they hear and they receive. They understand what the word is saying. They perceive it. They get it. They get it, okay? When you get it, you act on it. So these people do the same thing as the people who are on stony ground. They may go on to baptism. They go on to get filled with the Holy Ghost. They receive the gospel that the apostles preach, and they begin to work on it. The gospel begins to work in their lives. They hear and receive. They, they have the same joy. They're excited about doing it. There they go. What makes this group different than all the rest? Let's see. And bring forth fruit. Stop right there. These people have three things, whereas anyone else has either one or two. The people that just hear, they're in trouble because they're just going to hear a noise. They're going to hear the preaching and leave the church, and the devil's going to take them right out of their mind, and you're never going to see them again. Then you have the people that are going to have fall on, on uh, stony ground. They're going to hear it. They're going to be glad. They're going to hear and receive it. They have two things going for them. And they're going to get excited, but they're not going to have any development or root in them. They are lacking root. Notice the third thing he adds to this group that becomes the good seed. They hear the word, they receive it, and they bring forth fruit. Now, this is important because we need to figure out what is going on between the time they received the word like the other people did, but they go on to bring forth fruit and the other people didn't. We need to understand what, what that is because we want to be what? The good ground. And here's what I'm going to tell you. The problem is these the people, other people did not get rooted in God. That's the trouble. They never got rooted in God. They felt good. They were running around. They, they thought they had great faith, but they didn't materialize because they never allowed themselves to become rooted in God. That's what the problem is. These people go on to the next category and they bring forth fruit. Remember, 
The people on the stony ground had the same thing these people had. They heard the word and they received it. The exact same thing. What's missing between the two different kinds of people? One got rooted in God and he endured and stayed. And we're going to talk about that. And what happened? He brought forth fruit. This, is, this person can take Romans 10, 17 to heart. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. They have an ear to hear. They perceive what God was saying, understood it, let their faith work in them and begin to obey the word of God. Then they went on and they begin to do the things the Lord said. Look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. Paul said to these people, for this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, they received the apostles' doctrine, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God. Watch what Brother Paul says about this category of believer in his last verse in 1 Thessalonians 2.13. The last part of that verse, he says what? Which effectually worked also in you that believe. Hold it. When you receive the word and it begins to work, Paul said, you heard the gospel that we, meaning him and the other apostles, preached, and it began to work effectually, effectually in you. What does effectually mean? Effectually means that something brings about a desired result or it produces something. Whoa, now we're getting somewhere. That word, that gospel, the preaching of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ goes into the person's heart. Their faith begins to act on the word. No, we're not talking about just doing works now, a doctrine of works. We're talking about letting faith be identified by your actions. So they obey the word of God. And notice what Paul says. When they obey the word of God, it began to work effectually in them. These people go on when they hear the word. Because remember, Jesus said, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. So when they hear the word, they believe the word of God, they repent, the Holy Ghost comes upon them and it begins to grow and materialize inside them. It begins to work effectually in them. What does it do? It produces fruit. Let me tell you something, saints. When the Lord comes back, he's going to look at us as his bride, the people who say, I'm professing that I am a Christian, okay? We can't only profess we are saved, we have to possess the Spirit of God so that we can produce what Christ wants us to produce, and that is fruit. The word begins to work effectually in us and we produce fruit. So we see then that the only difference between that person that is the good ground and the person that is the stony ground is that what? The stony ground person never grows roots. They never dig deep into the word. The word never begins to be entangled in them so that it grows and begins to cause them to produce fruit. Oh, it, uh, I've said this before. We all know when we look at a tree in a yard that's not growing and we look at it over a period of time, it tells us that something is wrong. Saints, let me, let me help you out. Okay. There are a lot of people who keep saying that they are Christians, but when you look at what they are producing, when you look at their lives, it doesn't materialize. Did not Jesus say men do not gather grapes of thorns? Okay, So we know that a grape tree cannot produce figs. If I am a person of God, I'm going to begin to produce those things that are godly. Hello, somebody. I don't know why this is very difficult for some people, but it is. If I am a child of God, I'm going to begin to produce those things that are consistent with God's nature. Because when I became adopted into the family of God, Galatians chapter number four, when I became adopted into the family of God, I became a son of God. Sons, by adoption, according to the word of God, took on the same privileges as the other children that are in the family. So when we are filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost, and the Bible says, therefore God has sent his Holy Spirit into your heart, crying, Abba, Father, we become his sons and daughters. When you are my son and my daughter, you take on some of my characteristics and my nature, right? My wife and I, sometimes we laugh because we look at our sons and we talk about how much of our natures and how much of our characters are in our children. Some of them have more of my character and more of my wife's. Some of them have more of my wife's and, and, and less of mine, so on and so forth. But we see our characters, what? In our seed. 
So if we are people of God, we are going to do what? We're going to be born of the word of God, according to the word, and we're going to begin to produce fruit. We're going to materialize and we're going to produce fruit. How are we going to do that? The key is to get rooted in God. If you want to be one of these types of soil that actually materializes, takes the word in, hears it and receives it, and bring forth fruit, it is going to take being rooted in God to do that. And let me tell you something else, saints. If we're not rooted in God, there's going to come a day that we won't be able to stand. Because I'm going to tell you something, and you may have heard this before, and I believe it's coming again. There's going to come a time when having church, I just received a letter from a pastor just recently, an email. There's going to come a time when we're not going to be able to have church the way we have church. It's going to be illegal to have church the way we have church. The things we teach from the word of God are going to be challenged. I, I believe it and that I believe it's going to happen before I leave this earth. They're going to start asking us, first asking that we put aside the Bible. Secondly, they're going to begin to demand that we put it aside. And I'm going to tell you something, if we don't have the word of God rooted in us and we are not rooted in the word, we are not going to be able to stand in this last days. We are getting close to the mark, saints, where the people of God who profess they are Christians are going to not only have to have the spirit of God in them, living a holy and sanctified life, separate from the world and set aside from sin. We are not only going to have to have that, but we're going to have to be willing to stand up and say, we are not going to be like the things of the world, and we belong to God. We are coming very close to that. Those Christians who are in the closet, who want to just move around and kind of blend in with everybody, let me tell you something. God did not call you and I to blend in and be everybody's friend and everybody's buddy and look like everybody else. That's not why he gave us the power of God. You shall receive what? Power. Power is the ability to do something. <laughs> In a nutshell, that's what it is. And what did he give us power to do? You can read that in Acts chapter 1 verse 8. I think I put that in your notes. Ye shall become what? Witnesses unto me. The people of Israel, the, Jew, the, the, the disciples, when they received the Holy Ghost, they were emboldened by the power they received. Right? They went back into Jerusalem and began to preach the doctrine where they were cowering down in a room before after Jesus was resurrected. But when they got filled with the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost, they were emboldened. I'm going to say this, and I, I don't, I'm not trying to hurt anybody's feelings, but I, this bothers me. It bothers me when I see so many people who profess to be Christians, they have no power. They're so easily deflated. They're so easily sidetracked. They're so easily misled carried away with every wind of doctrine. They're so easily turned around. They're so easily put off. They're so easily irritated that they, oh, no, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm done with this. I, it bothers me when we have all these examples in the Bible of Christians who were empowered by the Holy Ghost. And you know what they did? They heard the word. They received the word. It went into their hearts and grew. They became rooted in Jesus. Ask Peter if you ever, ever get a chance to meet him, what happened to him. Here was a man that denied the Lord three times in one night. But when he received the Holy Ghost, you never hear about him doing that ever again. Why? He understood that he needed to receive the word and get some root. When that root came in him and he developed it in the ground and took soil, he was able to stand. Now, before we go off, we need to tell you how you're going to do that. How do we get rooted in God? We want to become good, good, good seed. Nobody wants to be good ground. Nobody wants to be a bad uh, type of ground. Now, I want you to remember this again. There are only four different types. And this is something, when I read this scripture many years ago, it really did a lot for me because there are only four different types of soil. You're going to be one of those types of ground. We have to accept that, saints. And I don't know about you, I want to be the good ground. And I can see that the difference between those people who did not become good ground and the people who did is that they were not rooted in the word of God. If you become rooted in God and allow God to be rooted in you, you will become good ground and bring forth fruit, some 30, some 60, and some 100 fold. Amen. Amen. So let's read about how we do it. How do we get rooted? Brother Bacon, tell us. 
before you leave, how to become rooted in God. We need to know that. Thank you very much because I'm going to share that with you because I want to hear it again myself. All right, let's go to the first scripture, uh, Psalm 46 and 10. Okay, he says, be still and know that I am God. I'm going to stop right there. Psalms 46 and 10, be still and know that I am God. Brother Bacon, why did you read that scripture? That's a very good question, Saint. I'm going to explain it to you. There are too many people, and if this is you, please don't get offended at me. This is what the word of God is telling us. There are too many people who don't understand this concept that I'm about to bring out. I don't ever remember planting a tree in the backyard and coming out the next day and it was on the opposite side of the yard from where I planted it. Hello, somebody. I hope you're listening to me. What many people do is they don't sit still. They don't get to the word of God. They don't get to a place where God has given them a shepherd to feed their souls with knowledge and sit still so that they can become root. We can't let our roots grow if we're running around. Hello. There's no way in the world we can do that. But then there are some people who don't understand that. The, and, and I used to hear my mother say, you can't eat at everyone's house. Okay, my, uh, some of you know what I'm talking about. Some of you are very finicky and very picky about where you eat and what restaurants you attend. Some of, well, we can't attend any restaurants right now, most of us, unless you're eating outside. But anyway, some of you are very picky. Some people don't even eat out at restaurants. They don't think the food is good enough or it's not clean enough. They're worried about that. They're very selective. Well, saints, let me ask you something. If we're that selective about our, uh, uh, restaurants, how selective should we be about our souls? We just can't eat anywhere, so we run around. We've got to be still. Here's the next thing. It's important for us to sit and be still. Here's the next thing. Desire, if you want to get rooted in God, here's how to do it. I'm telling you how to get rooted in God. Desire the sincere milk of the word. I, we read this scripture a lot. It's one of my favorites, okay? Uh, I, Brother Bacon, are there other scriptures? Yes, there's plenty of others, and I could have given you another one, but I like this one because I just love the way it sounds, first of all. The sincere milk of the word, okay? Uh, let's go to 1 Peter 2 and 2. As newborn babes, the Bible says, desire the sincere milk of the word. Here's why. That ye may grow thereby. There's our problem right there with the stony ground receiver. They started off well. They heard, remember, the stony ground person heard the word and received it. it. Went on for a while, became a saint in the church. Seemingly was doing good, but they did not grow thereby. They didn't grow because they did not take root. Maybe they were running around too much. Maybe they came to church every now and then. Maybe they listened to the pastor once every six months, if that. But I'm going to tell you something. If you don't get rooted in the word, you will not be able to stand and materialize and you will never bring forth good fruit. Okay? We have to remember that this is how this works. We've got to desire the sense of your milk of the word. When the word, what do you think about when you hear the word desire? Desire is not just I'd like to. The desire is not just I want to. Desire is more of a, the level of craving something to the point that I'm going to act ugly if I don't get it. Haven't you noticed what babies do when they're really hungry? They open their mouth so wide it seems like you can put a, <laughs> a basketball in there. They cry and they go, and when they're hungry, they're fussy. And somebody says, feed that child. Well, as soon as they get that mother's milk, they just calm right down. They're, they were hungry. And they make it known for, to, to the mother that I'm not just crying just because I want you to, to, to look over here. I'm, I need nourishment. We've got to have that desire in us to desire to sense your milk in the word, okay? And when we do that, we'll do what Paul says in 2 Timothy 2.15. We'll study. We'll study to show ourselves approved of the word. We'll look into the word and we'll begin to study because we'll desire it. I'm going to help somebody else right here because I, I, I know this is true. And I hope it doesn't offend, but I hope it helps. Some of us have an appetite for everything but the right thing. We have appetites for everything there is in the world that will not do us any spiritual good, but our spiritual appetite is on an all-time low. It's the truth. You know what I read? I'll tell you this. I read an article just recently that said, said that depressed people, now hear what I'm saying, 
people that are typically depressed, right, watch more 30% more television a week than people who are not depressed. Now, anybody who knows anything about that should say, what's wrong with that picture? I mean, already most people spend 32 hours a week behind that thing. So people who are depressed, no wonder they're depressed. Okay? No wonder they can't come out of the hole they're in and get their mind straight. They don't have an appetite for the things of God. Let me tell you something, saints. We've got to develop a desire for the word. Amen. Let's go to the next one. Here's the next thing we need to do if we want to get rooted in God. We want to be that good ground. We don't want to stay the stony ground. Yeah, we heard it and received it, but we want to last. Amen. How many people want to last? Amen. Well, this is how to do it. Be teachable. Oh, Brother Bacon, now you're talking about something. Be teachable. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 1. Proverbs 12 and 1 says what? Whoso loveth instruction, loveth knowledge. Okay, but he that hated reproof is brutish. Can I tell you something? Some people don't want somebody to teach them. Some people are not teachable people. Hello. I hope you're listening to me. Well, Pastor Baker, why do we need that? Because God said it. Why do I need a pastor? Because God said he's going to give us one. So what if I don't have one? Then you're working in your own order and not God's order. And whenever you're working in your order and not God's order, guess what results you're going to get? You may get yours, but they won't be like God's. And God didn't intend for us to get our results. He intended for us to get his results. We need to understand that we must be teachable. We must be pliable. They use the word pliable, malleable, changeable, moldable. We must be willing to do what? This is what happened to the people on stony ground. They were offended easy. I don't know how many people that come into the church and they hear something in the word of God. Oh, I'm not going to receive that. I've heard people say, oh, I don't believe that. I, a person said to me just one day, I don't necessarily believe that. Oh, well, just because you don't believe something, it doesn't mean it's any less true. It just means that you are at a, are at a point that you refuse to receive it. We've got to understand something. If we want to get to the point that we are good soil, and that is the only kind of soil that's going to produce fruit, we've got to get rooted in the Word of God. We've got to get rooted in God. And to get rooted in God, we've got to be teachable. We've got to allow somebody that God put in the church. I give you the scripture all the time. Jeremiah 3.15, I will give you pastors after my own heart that will feed us. And we can't be fed if we keep our mouths shutting like this. We've seen some children and they do that when the parents are trying to feed them with a spoon. They're fighting every little bit to get. We won't get rooted in God if we're not teachable. I can guarantee you that. Here's the next thing. Prayer and fasting. I could talk about prayer and fasting all day and we probably should. But, but the thing we should do about prayer and fasting more than talk about it is practice it. Prayer and fasting, you can, let me tell you something, saints, you, you, you seminar attenders, you people who like to go to seminars, there's nothing wrong with seminars, you can go to Bible classes, you can be taught about prayer until the cows come home, but until you and I make prayer a regular thing on our venue that we participate in, that we practice, is not going to do us any good. But real prayer fortifies the individual. Jesus said it in this wise in Luke chapter 18, one of my favorite scriptures on prayer. And he spake a parable unto them to this end that men ought to always pray and not faint. So there we see that lack of prayer is a contributing factor to people fainting. Wait a minute. I'm going to help us here before we go forward. What was the problem of the person who was, had fallen on thorny ground? He didn't last. He didn't last. He wasn't rooted in God, which makes me think there was very little prayer going on. Because prayer, according to the Bible, is directly proportional to us staying and not fainting. So let me ask you this. Do you want to be a laster? Or do you want to be somebody who quits? Somebody told me one time, quitters never win. And winners never quit. But the stony, stony ground individual didn't get rooted in the word and he didn't get rooted in God enough to understand you need to add prayer to your daily schedule. Okay? You need to make sure you get a full course of that. Okay? You need to do that. All right? Now, let's go on to the next one. 
Continue in what you're doing. Here's the next thing. I, uh, one preacher said, men don't despair. And then he said, but if you do, keep at it anyway. Okay. When things get rough, we can't get going the opposite direction. We've got to continue. Acts chapter 2, verse 42. I love the scripture. This is one of my favorite, and I've said this many times. If most of us would understand that we're a lot of our problem for going back away from God, cooling off from the flames, dying out, petering out, fizzling out, leaving out, walking out, okay? If we understood that our biggest problem is linked to the lack of following this particular scripture that we are about to read, we would change our st stance in God almost overnight. They continued steadfastly. Somebody say steadfast. Steadfast means that you are determined in your mind that you're not going to be moved, okay? In the apostles' doctrine, what doctrine? Hello, thanks. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4, there are how many lords? One Lord, one faith, and one baptism. They continued in the apostles' doctrine. Well, somebody said, well, pastor, well, what about the other doctrines? There's no other doctrine in the Bible that's going to save you other than the apostle doctrine. There's no, let me say that again, there is no other doctrine that Jesus gave anybody that's going to save anybody other than the apostles teaching. All right, let's go on. They continue steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and in fellowship. Somebody say fellowship. Again, we say fellowship, not battleship. There are people in the church who, who I, I believe have been deceived by Satan to do everything they can to disrupt the flow of fellowship. Okay, but God will take care of them in time. And in breaking of bread and in prayers, the communion and the prayers, okay, continue steadfastly in the apostle doctrine and breaking of bread and prayers. Philippians 4 and 9, look what he says. Those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me. Listen to what Paul is saying. He's reiterating what I just read in Acts chapter 2, verse 48. They continued in the apostle's doctrine. Paul is here telling the church of Philippi that, look, those things that you've seen me do, those things you've learned from me, an apostle, those things you've received from me, the apostle, do those things. Listen to what he said. Do those things, and what's going to happen? The God of peace shall be with you. If you want to get rooted in God's word, you've got to continue in the apostle's teaching so that you can do what? You can go on from hearing and receiving to producing fruit. And you won't have to worry about quitting and falling down. All right? Look at the last one. The last thing for this evening, we need to endure. Somebody say that with me. Endure. If I'm going to be rooted in the word of God, if I'm going to produce fruit, if I'm going to be that good ground that hears, that receives, and brings forth fruit, 30, 60, and 100 fold, here's the thing I've got to do. I've got to understand that when things get tough, I've got to get tougher. When things don't go my way, I can't fall down and have a pity party. Hello, somebody. I wish I had a few more minutes I'd talk about that. I don't know how many people I've seen in my lifetime that I want to say sometime, look, stop having your pity party. I know it hurts, but it hurts for everybody. None of us are exempt. Well, your problem is not like mine, Pastor. Well, it's not. Well, guess what? I may have a problem that you don't even know about. But here's what I'm going to tell you. You and I both, if we want to bring forth fruit and be good soil, we must endure. Look at what Paul says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier. Somebody say good soldier. Now he wouldn't have said good soldier if there wasn't a difference between a good soldier and a bad soldier. So there has to be a difference. So what's the difference between a good soldier and a soldier that's not good? It stands to reason to me that a soldier that's not good is certainly a soldier that won't endure. Why? Because Jesus said, if any man draw back, my soul has no pleasure in him. Okay? Paul said that in the book of Hebrews. If any man draw back, my his soul, my soul will have no pleasure in him. But we are not those that draw back to perdition that go back into sin. That people fall away from God, they go back into the world. Why? Because they did not get rooted in God. So Paul tells us here, do, do, do what? Endure hardness as a good soldier. Look at verse number four. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who had chosen him to be a soldier. So once again, if you want to have be rooted in God, if you want to stay, if you want to be the kind of ground that's going to hear, receive, and bring forth fruit 30, 60, 100 fold, 
This is what you must do to get rooted in God. You've got to be still. You can't run around all over the place, saints. I'm sorry. Well, pastor, I've got a pastor down in, in Mexico, and I've got a pastor in North Carolina, and I've got a pastor in Texas. Let me tell you something. You can only have one pastor at a time, and you're going to eat here and eat there, and you're going to find that you're going to catch something after a while that's not going to agree with your system. So I'm going to tell you something. Get you a pastor that you can sit under, that you can trust. Well, Pastor Bacon, I don't know if I like your teaching. Well, guess what? You don't, you're not the only one. Sometimes I'm not so agreeable with, 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 with it myself. I'm asking God to help me. But I'm going to tell you something. You need to find somebody that you can be faithful under, that you can sit under their teaching and be still. Because what you're going to do is you're going to get a hold of the wrong mindset, the wrong appetite, the wrong spirit, and you're going to find out in the end that it's not going to help you because you're not going to bring forth fruit unto God and last. That's not God's plan, okay? Number two, you've got a desire to sincere milk of the word. Get an appetite for the things that are right. Get the right kind of appetite for the word of God. Be teachable. Let someone be able to mold you and shape you, okay? Pray and fast. Keep your body under. Discipline yourself to do without. Learn to seek God in prayer and spend time with him. Continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. Don't give up. And that's the last one is to endure. When things get tough, hang in there. When things are, offend you from the word, Jesus said what? Blessed is he that is not offended in me. Don't get offended. Ask God to help you to grow and mature so that you can handle the deeper truths of the word and endure. Then you will be rooted in God. Then you will be able to go on and produce fruit. I hope this Bible class has helped you. I hope it blesses you. I hope you have a great day. May God bless you, keep you. Don't forget, do it God's way and you'll get God's results. Please don't forget also, if you have any questions or comments, go to our website, email us at worship at godswaytoday.org. Worship at godswaytoday.org. May God bless you. We'll see you next time in Jesus' name.